Many times they are the polar opposites. No wonder that argument you keep having feels like it's the same thing over and over and over again. Because it is. Yet the interesting thing is that you might even be making decisions based on someone else in your life, now or in the past. You're listening to the Unshackle Your Life podcast with Debbie Colburn, the place to break through all of the hidden things that hold each of us back, things that scare us and things that challenge us and things we're just plain fed up with. We talk all things money and business, big and small. We dive deep, we get real and we get raw, discovering and exploring what is really possible for you. It's a restart. If you've ever struggled with shame, worry, or just plain self-doubt, if you've ever thought it's not enough when you looked at your bank account or your credit card, if you're sick and tired of living a cycle of crisis to crisis to crisis, no matter whether it's in your personal life, in your business, or your relationships, then this is where you need to be. We'll bring you new ideas, tips, and tactics, and connect you to the resources to get you unlocking your own shackles and release your unique abilities. No matter what's going on in your life right now, maybe you're in survival mode, just barely getting by, living day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck. Maybe you're in a job or a career or running a business that is leaving you on empty, depleted, uninspired, or anything in between. I've got you back. Ready? So buckle on up, take a deep breath, and join me in a conversation about jumpstarting your life and breaking free of your shackles and create that thing that you've been scared to ask for. Welcome to episode 91. I know I'm going to sound a bit nuts here, But what if I share that how someone else thinks about money is affecting your ability to create, have, save, give away, donate, whatever related to money? Yeah, it's not just you. Ever had an argument with your partner over money? Can't agree on how much to spend on something or even to spend at all? Yeah, I see all those hands going up. Or that savings account. Growing too slow for one of you, too fast or too big for the other, or you just can't get it to grow even the teeny tiniest little bit? Or maybe one of you is like Fort Knox and can totally grow their money reserve and yet can't commit to something because they think they can't afford it. I know, it's bananas. Ever not done something because of how it would look to someone else if it really took off? Did you know that most partners, and I'm not just talking about husbands and wives, boyfriends and girlfriends, but business partners, even your staff and your managers, rarely ever think about money the same way. They have very different relationships with money, and many times they are the polar opposites. No wonder that argument you keep having feels like it's over the same thing again and again and again. Because it is. Yet the interesting thing is that you might even be making decisions based on someone else in your life. Now or in the past. We can't buy that car. What would the neighbors think? Even though it's the one that you both love even agree on the color on. Now, before I go on, please, please, please remember that when I'm talking about money, I am not evangelizing material things. A rich life is different for everyone. I personally can't imagine why anyone would want to live in a huge house, but they do. And some people absolutely love and adore it. For some people, it's an albatross. 
And for me, I love smaller, almost tiny spaces. Clean lines, minimalist, modern, with a touch of antique. That's just me. I simply use those material things as examples that I've found people can easily relate to, connect to the concept. And we're going to be diving into this more in the Breakthrough Navigator, my new money edition. And I'd love you to join us. So there's always information in everything I send out. So what would the neighbors say? What would your sister say? Your coworkers? Maybe even the business owner where you work? Hell, I don't know. And nor should you. Yet you do. You think about it. Your actions or your inactions are very telling. But where did that thinking come from? And why does it matter? Other people's money blocks. Maybe someone somewhere in your past commented on a friend's new car, and you heard it to mean, you assumed that maybe they were thinking, I'm not worthy, I'm a bad, I'm an evil person, I'm not one of them anymore. Maybe even inferred that you got it in a less than legal way. Something like that. You'll never know until you start digging in. So what you do is you protect yourself by your money shield. And you don't allow yourself to have what you really want. Sometimes what you need. And I say that because even yesterday, like no matter what level you're at, no matter how much money you have in the bank, no matter what's going on, for the rest of your life, you'll be dealing with these things. Yesterday, I had an argument with myself in my head. I had it several times. Do I walk the 20, 20 minutes or so at minus 24? Well, it's probably minus 22. Really, 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 really freaking cold and freeze my, freeze my knees, even though it was totally bundled up, but you know, I'm fine in the cold weather and stuff. Or do I spend the $9, $9.99 and Uber there? And it's like I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. No matter what level, you're going to have these. Okay? So, let's stay with cars for a minute. So, we were talking about cars. You know, do I buy that debt car? I want to stay there for just a minute. In my life, you're going to find... This, this episode is a little bit of a raconteur storytelling, you know, things that... You, you can't make this crap up. <laughs> really can't. So in my married life in particular, so this is going back quite a ways, but it's important. We had a used Datsun 1200 that had a broomstick holding the frame together that we bought together. We pooled our money. We bought it for $100. Seriously, there was a wooden broomstick holding the frame together. We had an Aspen station wagon that we bought for a dollar. A Toyota Corolla I bought for my son for $2 off of my boss. A Datsun 510, including a spare parts car that we got for $150. Now, in case you're wondering, Datsun is Nissan's old brand name. The list is never ending. And in 1980, with a brand new baby and a new job, I bought a brand new Dodge Colt and I constantly heard from my father and from my brother about how buying a brand new car was a waste of money. Oh, and by the way, this was when the interest rate for prime loans was 16%. And that's a whole other conversation. Welcome to the 80s. Now I've heard that story. New car waste of money. Every year of my life, even still today, I literally heard that conversation in my family not less than a month ago. And so for me, and again, this is I, I'm using these examples to help you start looking at your own life and say, what are the patterns? What is it that's holding me stuck? What do I need to start unraveling? to start creating a breakthrough. And we can help you with that. So I have bought brand new, a 2001 Acura Integra. Love that car. A Mazda 323. Brand new, my most amazing car, a Mazda 6. 
and a Mustang Cobra DT GT. Yes, out of all of those, I bought a V8 rear-wheel drive car. Loved it. Every single time I hear them say, I would never buy new. What a waste. They lose 30% of their value right off the lot. Have anybody ever heard that? Blah, 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 blah. I'm sure you have. No matter where you live in the world, I'm sure you've heard some sort of story like that related to something that you purchase. Well, the thing is that that is their story. They can repair their own vehicles. They have the garages. They have the tools. They have the time. They have the skills. And they have the desire. And they have the money blocks that keep them there. That's just me just saying. I've been a single parent on my own with two children traveling hundreds of thousands into the millions of kilometers over over my lifetime. And the convenience and the lack of worry was worth it for me. I just got to say that. My dad prides himself on having only ever bought two brand new cars. A Lada. You remember that Russian box that was dirt cheap? And a brand new Volvo 145S wagon. Got to give props to him. It was a nice vehicle, but yeah. And if you guys remember, I lived the belief that I was only worthy of someone else's hand-me-downs. So my new cars were, in a way, my attempts to prove that that was not true. And that's how they work. There's, there's, we end up doing this flip-flop. We go from one extreme to the other, and you'll see that in your life. That's why you get people who've had financial struggles. All of a sudden, now they're a hoarder of money. It's because that's your emotional scale flipping you, and that's what we're going to... My programs and what I do tries to help you, not tries, it does help you figure this stuff out. It's not easy. Sometimes it's downright funny. So it sounds like I had it all figured out, right? Buy new cars, you know, problem solved. Stop right there. I had it all screwed up. Because what you don't see is that each one of those cars, the purchase of each One of those cars created drama in my life, another financial crisis. And in almost all cases, the world came back with vengeance, toppling my world over. And guys, you seriously can't make this stuff up. Now, I want you just to listen. This is, I I was trying to decide whether I put this in because it's going to make me sound like I'm a terrible driver, but the answer is I'm not. I'm a very, 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 very skilled sports car sports car racer. But I recognize that these things had zero to do with my ability to drive. My Colt. It was damaged, like, heavily when I hit a hydro pole at a super low speed, like 10 miles an hour, on a super dry, dusty dirt road with the sun in my eyes. You know those roads, right? The roads that when another car has been along it, It's like that wall of fog that you can't see. Like, I remember that I couldn't even see the front of the car. So I was going super, super slow, trying to stay on the, on the far right hand side. So if somebody was coming along in the, in there that I wouldn't get hit head on coming the other way. And at this weird spot in the road, the road made a 90 degree turn. I knew it was, there was a road that I, that I lived on. But I literally didn't turn, and I drove into the pole. 60 miles away from my work. I had a baby in my baby carrier, snugged up to me, you know, those ones that go on your front, an Irish setter, my dog on a leash, and I hitchhiked 40 miles into the city. Because, well, let's just say there's a reason my ex is my ex. Mustang. Written off two years, two years old in a T-bone accident at 50 miles an hour. I T-boned a 1976 Chevy Nova. Why? Because it was a five lane road. There was nowhere for me to go. And this person pulled out of a shopping center. There was one of those big, big white cube vans, you know, that you can't see past. It's like a white one. And they just literally pulled it, pulled out of the shopping center right in front of it, didn't even look to see if there was any other traffic coming, and boom! For me, it was like hitting a wall. 
And that was it. Written off. Kids at home with the babysitter? Yeah, whole other story. My Mazda 6, well, suffice to say, it actually didn't belong to me, as it was part of my big bad decision, so I willingly gave it back. My Acura? I gave it up late in its life, when I couldn't afford the insurance. The joys of his 16-year-old male driver, that would be my son, and based on his age, he got his driver's license in the very first year that the province of Ontario instituted this astronomical rate hike for new drivers that had not gone through their ridiculous Ontario driver's, driver's school thing. This is the child who is 40 years old. He has had one accident in his life, and that's because he hit a light post trying not to T-bone somebody who was running a red light and who is the 2012 Masters Go-Karting Champion in Canada. This kid can drive because he learned from the guys that I was associated with. But I had to give up my car because I couldn't afford the insurance. It was, like in today's terms, it wasn't even, it, it wasn't even, like this, we're, we're into the 2000s, so we're not far, we're like 15, year, 15 years ago or so, but it was like $1,600 or something like that. But I was still trying to find my way. And the 323, as I look back, I can see that was at a plateau in my life where I'd started to figure out the early pieces of this whole money story. And that car lived with me until its very, very, very last days when my son took it because he actually picked up some of my unfortunate money beliefs that we're working on helping him through. And, but the odometer clicked over clicked over 325,000 kilometers. Today I see, like I started to say, this exact scenario playing out in my son's life, in his, in his words, in his actions, and it's because he's the one of my two children who has struggled the most with the stories he saw me and him and his sister live through. Now, I hope as I share some of the stories in my life, and I know some, some of you are thinking this, is, Debbie, Debbie, really, some of you are thinking about yours. Where might there be something similar? Don't get hung up on the cars and stuff like that, but where do you have patterns? What string can you pull on just a little? And see what's behind it. It's like, you know, I just bought a, I just bought a new chair. It has this, uh, this amazing upholstery on it. And in order to get at everything, there's a zipper on the bottom. It's like a secret door. So before I go on, just remember, even though your life encompasses the thinking, well, the effects of your partner or your family or your friends thinking about money, their blocks, their own stories, those are theirs. They're not yours. And yours are yours. And only you can clear those up. So I'm going to get back to that now. Now that I've done that little tangent, just to give you some examples, make sure that you don't get caught in the trying to fix them trap. That's not your job. Your job is to get your money thinking to be the very best that it can possibly be for you. And watch out for the times when you're tempted to use their blocks as an excuse to not move forward with something. There will be days when your partner will trigger you. Something they do, something they say, an off-the-cuff comment. You might feel like lashing out. and You might feel like shutting down and giving up. And you might feel like running to someone else and start bitching about them and their ridiculous thinking. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. A trigger is a warning sign that says, please stop and examine why this is triggering you. And as I'm writing this, I can see, a, I'm imagining, I'm visualizing a couple in their living room in my head. And I'm trying to mentally get them to take a breath because they're starting to scream at each other. And it's that same argument over and over again, I'm waiting for one of them to ask a question, to de-escalate the emotions, to be inquisitive, curious, 
to find out more about what's behind the other person's thinking. Maybe asking a question about their childhood or their family. Or did you get any pocket money? You know, how did you, how do you, how do people deal with gifts at birthday? Something like that. Just, just be curious. So often people enter into a relationship of some form and they have absolutely no clue about the other person's life before them. My ex and I were like that. He had zero. He had a zero that literally was zero or below. I had a belief that I could never do the right thing with money. You remember me talking about where that one came from. I created it, but I know where the origin was. A nasty combination. Those two thinkings? <laughs> oh. So we both just made sure that we never had any money. Even on our honeymoon, it was brutally apparent coming back with debt we couldn't afford for things that had no future value and didn't bring joy with them. Oh my God, guys, I wish I knew then what I knew now. And funny thing is, nothing has changed with him. He's still in the same damn position. Having a profession in accounting, that's me. A successful career made no difference whatsoever. Don't let anyone tell you that they don't have any money blocks. We all do. Being an accountant just meant and means I understand and know how to work with the technical side of money, the mechanics of money. I struggled with the emotions of money, the vibration of money. I for sure had no understanding of my relationship with money. I just knew I never had any. I'd get it. I'd have a good salary. You know, things would go really well. And then, like, I was totally always expecting someone to just yank the rug out from underneath me. There is a day early in my early career at Deloitte that I wish I could go back to. I really do. To that week, the month, and see and hear what I was actually doing. Who I was listening to. Who was in my circle. What was I thinking? And it might even have been, what client was I working on? Why? Because one day the company deposited $250,000 in my bank account. Yeah, like I said, you can't make this stuff up. Then they reversed it. You know, the, the bookkeeper guy came running down the hall and said, oh my God, Debbie, we made a mistake. We made a mistake. There's $250,000 in your bank account. I'm like, yeah, no, that's awesome. Then they reversed it. But guess what, guess what they did? They replaced it with a check for the exact same amount as like the universe was trying to give me a quarter of a million dollars. I, I didn't know how to accept it. Obviously, that would have been illegal. But something out there was trying to give me money. And that just happened to be the way that it came at the time. And my thinking was working. And I clearly wasn't blocking money. I was blocking receiving it. It was coming to me, receiving and saving. So we've talked about it. There's, there's, number of different pots you have to work out. The catch was, here's the thing, guys. The catch was that my salary increase was supposed to be $25,000. Someone just literally put an extra zero on it and changed it to bonus or something like that, retroactive or something. So you got to love payroll, right? The number one thing that trips up people's lives. One little glitch with payroll Frig it up for good. Screw up a week. Screw up a relationship. That's why I really don't like working on payroll. Sometimes the blocks can show up when there is a change in the dynamic on the earnings scale or the type of earnings. You know, it could be you're changing from doing an active job as stuff into doing something passively. Maybe there's a change that requires more or less physical labor versus more white collar type stuff. You know, it's the dynamic in the relationship. Maybe, well, let's just think about the pand pandemic. And I bet there are many partnerships out there that have been triggered 
by negative money stories simply because of the imbalance. The person who had the, let's call it the supporting income is now the primary income source. I see that a lot in the online, in the online space. What happens then? If let's say the man is from the family, from a family background where they believe that the man should be the one supporting the family. And the family is very vocal in sharing that too. And that's the things running through the man's head. Imagine what that could do to a relationship if there's no communication or awareness of the source of the disconnect. The simplest things can be the most enlightening, like the stack of unopened bills that annoys the crap out of the other person. They don't understand why one person doesn't do that. The need to always buy the cheapest option when you have the money. Huh? Even, they show up in the weirdest places. Even asking for a doggy bag or a box at a restaurant. Or always insisting on splitting the check into each person. I used to be that person that never let any food that I paid for go. And now I find that you'll find that you see it in other person people first. You will always see it in other people first. This splitting check, splitting the check in per people. There are times for that. Absolutely. You know, we're talking about business and that type of stuff. But if someone wants to pay for everybody else and it's a, a genuine offer that they want to, let them say thank you. But just putting that out there. And here's one of the many, many ones that new entrepreneurs hear, and it sends them on a tear. Maybe you should just go and get a job. Maybe you just call your old boss and get your job back. Hell effing no. And I've personally heard that more times than I care to count from my family. Families simply don't understand. They can't possibly fathom the financial and decision challenges that, that being an entrepreneur faces. It's We're in the business of solving problems. They don't see a job in the same way we do. They don't get that it isn't money, profit right out of the gate on day one. Like, there are lots of entrepreneurs that don't even get that. They think that they're just going to put up a sign and all of a sudden they're going to be in, in profit right away. It can be. But it's unusual for it to be that way. And frequently it's a, it's, it's a spike. It's like it, it can be money in right away and then it's like drought. But even suggesting you change jobs, ask for a pay raise, all of those are other people's thinking. What are you doing? What are you not doing? Because of how you think someone else will react or how it will affect someone else. Where are you holding yourself back because you're afraid of how they'll feel about your success? However you define that. The fact that you have more money, the fact that you have more freedom, you're, you've, you've got some liberties now. Even that you're going on a regular basis to get a pedicure. I get moment groomed every five to six weeks. It's, it's about $200. How about that? And I watch to see when I share that information with people and I can see it on their faces. And I used to think that way too. I used to think that was ridiculous. Where are you feeling guilty about your newfound abundance? Or feel bad because you're actually able to step up and help out financially because of your up-leveled business or your new position or you're just your your new strategy in your in your banking you're you've got stuff on autopilot now so today's episode is really my effort to get you to loosen up your thinking about money cuz money doesn't all money frequently in money box money relationship it doesn't make logical sense. That's Once you get that, then it's just a game. I want you to look at the stuff that is littered along your lifeline 
that links to your experiences with money, whether you remember them right away or not. And I've got a money tracker. We're going to pop that out some someday. And there's a lot here. And my wish is that you take away something from today that will encourage you to take the next step, to start building a bias for action in your daily life. You already know that your thinking is what drives everything. So we've created this new daily affirmation that people are loving, and it's sent to you every day for 90 days so that you can unlock every day with intention. Just sign up free. It's at Debbie Colburn slash unlock the day. So we're here. We're at the end, and it's time for the question that I ask everyone at the end of each episode. What is the best thing that could happen if you unlock just one thing in your life today? Hey, if this podcast got you thinking, please make sure you're subscribed and share it with anyone who needs to hear this. The link is in the show notes and please drop us a review on whatever podcast player that you're listening on, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, you name it. And make sure that you drop over to our website, debbiecolburn.com forward slash links forward slash that's D-E-B-B-I-E-C-O-L-B-O-U-R-N dot com forward slash links forward slash to get our brand new seven day quick action guide and to check out what's coming up in 2022. And please make sure that you're following us on LinkedIn and on Instagram just to keep you on your toes as a slightly different name at MS Debbie Colbert.